Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, about 3.45 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the 1st of May, the year 2021. And the last time I did a podcast was actually 19 days ago. Well, actually 20 days ago on uh, 11 April 2021. Uh Why the gap? Honestly, um, just haven't kind of been feeling it, for lack of a better statement, which is okay. It's not a crime, Uh, but I have been trying to uh, stay on top of this and uh, continue to bring this uh, to people, you know, for everyone's benefit. Now, interestingly enough, um, I, uh, I, I, first off, I'm not going to pull a card for this reading. Uh, I want to talk about something that's, uh, uh, if you will, a bit closer to home. Uh, seems like for the last, uh, seven or 11 days, something like that, somewhere in between... I'll say as early as one in the morning, upwards of a six something or so in the morning. Uh, What appears to be, at least in terms of listening, appears to be happening is either someone is taking a shortcut. around the outside of our home for some reason, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense because where we're situated, if you walk towards the street, you're hitting a a gate and a secondary gate that won't let you pass through the other side. It's like, why would you do that? It doesn't make sense. And then on top of it, um, if what I'm perceiving is correct, whoever's doing this, we're dealing with a situation where Um, maybe they're using it as sort of a defensible space because at the entry of it, well, there's one way in and the other three angles, walls, if you will, are blocked off, you know, two sides by a building and one side by a gate. So if something's coming and they've set up some sort of tripwire, I don't know, um, they'll be notified. But it's it's just damn odd. It sounds like it's a point someone is moving rocks or someone is leaning up against the wall or scratching up against the wall. Interestingly enough, a few years ago at some fairly obnoxious hour of the morning, at least for us at that time, it sounded like someone was walking around the in the attic space of the building. It's like, uh, first off, how they get in there, because as far as I can tell, there's only, technically, from our place, um, three points of ingress. Uh, One would be through our appointment, our apartment, uh, which it's just me, Vicky, and the cats, and the other two points would be on the extreme ends of the building above the interior ceiling level. It's like, this is just strange. So I thought I would just touch on this and speak about it and share my thoughts because, well, this particular uh, episode is going to be entitled Strangeness in the Dark of the Night at Our Home, or Dark of Night Strangeness, something like that. I'll figure it out. Um, but it's just, it's a very odd thing. It's like, Why? You know, and what I'm really surprised about is that our neighbors on the uh, the wall side uh, in the other complex, I'm surprised no one has, has uh, not called the police or something. I mean, someone's stalking around, skulking around at 2, 3, 4, 5, maybe 6 in the morning. Just strikes me as a little bit strange and odd. I don't know what to make of that. So, anyhow, um, that's the primary thing I wanted to talk about. And and as for 
<sighs> excuse me, um, wanting to, uh, maintain this as a, uh, as a consistent series of podcasts, I'm working on it, I'm working on it, I had, uh, I found myself over the last two weeks having just some really great ideas for things to talk about, but the problem is I haven't written them down immediately, so when I come back in a moment like this to try and recall it and to share it, it's like, now what was that idea I was thinking about, and you know, you don't write, especially once you get past, I don't know, 27 years of age, you don't write it down, good luck retrieving it from your memory. Uh, maybe maybe it's my generation. I don't know. But that's okay. That's okay. So, uh, on other notes of, of interest in my life. Um, Becky's good. The cats are good. Uh, everybody's in relatively good health. Uh, this COVID-19 vaccine thing has got us spooked. People are talking about, oh, yeah, it helps, you know, yada, yada. Uh, not really feeling it. Not at all. And, I mean, there was some poor nurse somewhere in our country who got the first dose of the vaccine, and she wound up in a case of, with a case of paralysis. Like, oh, hell no. I'm already not a fan of genetically modified foodstuffs. My understanding is they tampered with the genetics of... Uh, this particular vaccine is like, you know, uh, that's not a good idea. <laughs> we're, we're smart, but we don't know enough about genetics to be playing the role of God in tampering with such things. Um, we don't know what the long-term effects of this uh, COVID-19 vaccine are going to be. Uh, just like we still don't know what the uh, side effects of genetically modified organisms or foodstuffs is going to be. And I think, you know, I'm borrowing a line from the movie Jurassic Park uh, from Jeff Goldblum's character. Just because you can do something does not mean you should. And I know. Uh, the, the vaccine needed to be put in place and needed to be engineered and put together and made to distribute. But do we really know in the long run what this is going to do to humanity? Let alone the fact of uh, the, the virus, you know, coming into existence in the first place. Like, my God, how does that happen? And, and I'm not a scientist. I don't know. I, I do know that I, I wrote a brief paper on it. Just my opinion as a layperson, the, the notion of, uh, let me see hydrogen peroxide and blue light being able to take on and take down MRSA, which is a pretty nasty customer. And I thought, well, if those uh, two components can take down MRSA, I wonder what it could do with COVID-19. And I, I've gotten a lot of reasons, but again, um, I'm simply a student. I, I'm not uh, a scientific or medical researcher um, at best. I'm a lightweight uh, academic researcher. There's a whole lot to be uh, studied and learned. I'm not there. And I just wanted to put the, the notion of the blue light and the hydrogen peroxide out there as something that someone who knows way more than me could take uh, the ball and run with it, so to speak. Because, my God, you know, people were dropping like flies. Now we've got the poor nation of India. Well, they're not poor, but we've got the poor people. No, not the people. We've got the folks in India having a huge, huge, huge surge of this whole uh, COVID-19 thing. It's like, we have got to get this under control. We really do. People are dying and they shouldn't be. That's nuts. So, at the outset of this, I neglected to introduce myself. My name is Scott Albert, also known as Scott Albert Consultant. My website is uh, www.x and x-ray, p as in Paul, r as in Ralph, number 3.com. So XPR3.com. Um, it's my hope that in making these recordings, regardless of the subject matter, uh, they do something for someone out there. My thought is that, well, I feel like I have something to say, and I also feel like there's someone out there, or someone's out there, who can use what it is I have to say. And with that, I'm going to sign off of this particular podcast and uh, wish you all wellness. Namaste.